All right. So we talked about microphones, and I promised you guys a little bit about microphones, microphones that I, that I enjoy and, and why. So let's just do a little bit of that. I have here, um, well, I should preface by saying uh, I'm a microphone geek. Uh, I, I love mics. Maybe it's because I'm living with them all day long. Uh, I don't know. I just, I just like it. Uh, it's less about the technology so much. I'm not really a tech sort of uh, tech spec guy, but I, I'm into sort of the industrial design. I'm into how it feels in the hand and what it looks like. And I have a little bit of, I mean, it's this is pretty geeky, but I've got a geeky interest in the history of certain microphones. Okay, some people collect stamps, I collect mics. I confess. All right, so um, this is my quick access go-to bag. All right, this is my go-to bag. This is what I'll use on any given day. There's about another 60 microphones um, over here in a cabinet and um, that I can go to, um, but they're locked up. They're locked up, and um, I'll show you some of those, and I'll tell you why they're locked up. But these are sort of the, the ones that I use on Fridays when I'm working with my students. Let's go through it. Um, I don't have a favorite mic, but I have certain mics that are my favorite. So I'll start with those. Uh, first and foremost, I love this. This was a gift that was given to me by my dear friend and TBS certified instructor from Cagliari, Italy, Sergio Calafiera. Go check out Sergio's content on YouTube. He is an amazing singer. He's like, uh, he's like, um, he sings, he's like Chris Cornell reincarnate. I mean, go listen to this guy sing. He can do anything. He's brilliant. He's a great, great friend and a great coach. Anyways, in Italy, there's a company that makes handmade microphones. It's called Lombardi. This is the Lombardi mic made in Italy. I absolutely adore it. It is so awesome. So, it actually has a bit of a boomy. It has a little bit of boominess to it. Alright. Lombardi. Love it. Then you can go out to Amazon.com and get one. They're kind of pricey though. But uh, love it. Sergio, if you ever see this video, if you're watching right now, love you, buddy, and thank you so much for this this microphone. Uh, you didn't waste this on me. I use this thing all the time. Absolutely love it. Next. So, you know how the Germans make really great cars? <laughs> they do. You got your Mercedes, you got your Beamers, you got your Volkswagens. Uh, I mean, just the engineering in Germany is just the best in the world, really, in, in some regards. Well, you guys may not know this, but Germany is really super famous for making cars, and they're also really super famous and have a great, great history of making microphones. The greatest microphones in the world, uh, you know, arguably, are German microphones. That's another reason why we like Germans. <laughs> All right. you, you got your Neumann, uh, a Bayer Dynamic, um, uh, gosh, uh, um, AKG, which is not German, it's actually Austrian, similar. And then you have Sennheiser. Okay, this is the Sennheiser or sometimes we call it the Sen. This is the Sennheiser E935. This is, you cannot lose with this microphone. Apart from the fact that it has this beautiful cobalt blue um, uh, uh, color to it, which I just think is beautiful and lovely, um, it sounds killer. <laughs> This is just killer. I love the Sennheiser E935. Those of you that are shopping for mics, the Sennheiser E935. 
also notice how the the shape of the microphone has a little bit of a sexy sort of a sexy figure to it. All right, cradle grip, cradle grip. Any microphone that sort of thins out, beautiful for the grip. Okay. On behalf of myself, our uh, and all the teachers and students, Sennheiser, thank you for making wonderful microphones through the years. We all love you so much. I told you I'm geeking out over here. This is fun. All right, so what's next? This is a cool microphone. I love this. Uh, when, in, when you're collecting mics, um, it's cool to, uh, for me, to find mics that are rare, like from little tiny companies that you wouldn't hear about unless you sort of dug around for it on the internet, okay? This is sort of one of them. Um, this is a company out of Latvia, okay? And uh, these guys are really awesome. They treat me well, and they're, they're good friends. I'm in communication with them from time to time. This is their microphone called the HH1. This is the HH1 from Latvia. Latvia. Okay. Jay-Z. Company is Jay-Z Microphones. Jay-Z Microphones. Handmade from Latvia. See, it says made in Latvia. All right. HH1. Um, I like this microphone because it also has a little bit of an hourglass feel to it. It's comfortable in the hand. This flat top right here, this is a common design that you'll see on microphones from time to time. Not everybody does it, but sometimes people do. It's a good idea. What this does is, is the idea is it gets you sort of straight, straight into the diaphragm of the microphone because you're not sort of rolling off the edge. If you have a flat, a flat top on the grill, the 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 the, uh, the expectation the point is is that you would get in closer more consistently right on the diaphragm. It's a little bit brighter than the Sennheiser and the Lombardi microphone, um, but something that I really like about this microphone that I'm not sure the guys at Jay Z intended, and I'm sure this is, was their intent, and but this is something that I like, is the microphone tends to be a, a little, just a little bit windy. It, it gives you, you get a little bit of white noise in this. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little bit windy and white noise, which adds just a pinch, just a hint of distortion in the sound um, uh, when you're singing through it, which is really great for rock and roll. Okay, so if you want a really awesome, any of these mics are great for rock, but this is also pretty cool. It has a little bit of white noise in it, just a touch, in a good way, in a good way, and it makes it have a unique sound. And it's made with, it's handmade from Latvia with lots of love. All right, next. Uh, I had this one a few days ago. Hi, Rosanna. Hi, Belinda. Um, excuse me, a few weeks ago. This is, I also collect vintage mics, older mics from the 70s um, and 60s, 70s, 80s. It's a mic I purchased in Seattle at a pawn shop. This is the EVSRO627B. All right. Yeah! 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 And even though it's about 20 to 25 years old, it still sounds almost as good as any of these other microphones. Most of these microphones sound pretty much great, all right? The difference between any of these mics is little tiny margins. The reason I, 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 I like this mic is, again, notice the really thin shank, right? It's light, it's nimble, it floats, it's like a wizard wand. And that's what I want when I'm holding a microphone. And it accommodates my controversial cradle grip position as well. And I like the metallic finish, like the silver sort of silver metallic finish. All right, this is like the mic version of a chromed out Harley. All right, 
absolutely love this thing. It's small, it's light, it sounds killer, it's old, love it. By the way, um, if you if you scroll down to the bottom of uh, of our group page, there's one of these for sale at eBay right now. Um, I put it on the thing for you guys. I think it's like 90 bucks. Pick it up if you can. It's pretty cool. All right next, next. This is not a German mic, but in my opinion, this is the greatest American microphone company ever, and they're great. Sort of like Sennheiser in the sense that they have a long, long history of, of designing microphones, um, handheld microphones. Um, you just saw one of their older ones, a vintage one, and this is a newer version. I've probably used this microphone more than any other microphone in my studio. I probably, I've probably recommended this mic more than any other mic in my studio. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's my favorite, it's just still one of my favorites. And this is the Electrovoice 767 Alpha. This is the EV767A, all right? Now it comes with a rubber sleeve on it. Uh, I thought I'd grab the sleeve, it's not in there. But anyways, I had a little rubber sleeve in here, I pulled it off. Why? Because it if you pull the sleeve off, it gives you a thin shank. And again, I get my wizard wand. It's light and floating in my hand. It works for my grip. Okay? Now, something that I absolutely adore about this microphone, and that is... Drum roll, please. The diaphragm. Look at the size of that baby. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Big, 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 big diaphragm. Of all these microphones that I have, the EV767A probably has the biggest diaphragm. Generally speaking, not, not necessarily true, but as a general rule, if you get a big diaphragm, what you get from that is... Put this guy back on. What you get from a big diaphragm is more boom. Over all the microphones that I have here, there is no microphone that gives you more more boom behind it. So. Uh, if you want to get boomy and get some meat and get nice amplified low overtones in your EQ, the EV767A is very unique in that way. All right, um, it's boom. It's the boomiest mic in the collection, and that's just just makes it sound like like God. It's just great. So you get on, you get into your head voice, and you get a little extra amplification of the lower frequencies. That's a lot of help, and feels good in the hand. That's what she said. <laughs> keep going. Uh, let's see what else we got here. I have a cheap Chinese karaoke mic that I give to people that are, it uh, looks like they're going to drop it. So I give them this. All right. It's not one of my favorites. Um, this is a special edition all silver AKG D7. This is not, this is an Austrian microphone. AKG is from Austria. Um, apart from the fact that it's absolutely gorgeous, it sounds killer. So, like Sennheiser, similar to Sennheiser and the uh, German mics, the AKG comes from sort of the, the same culture uh, where they don't engineer crap. They make good stuff, all right? So, I recommend the AKG D7. If you can get a nice, pretty chrome one like this, go for it. Um, I did a shootout with these handhelds. I made I I I I made some recordings um, using handhelds. Okay, instead of the big diaphragm mics that hang from you know hang from mic stands, I just wanted to see to have the freedom of being of recording with a handheld just to get a feel for that. Sometimes you want to do that. 
kind of frees you up as a singer and you can emote better. And um, so what I discovered was if you want to make a recording with a handheld dynamic microphone, now I know it wouldn't be your first choice and you typically don't because you want to use a condenser mic or nicer big diaphragm mics, but if you wanted to experiment with a handheld dynamic mic in recordings, this sounds great on recordings. It's sort of washed out and wide. I don't know exactly why. Maybe someone like Draven could explain that, but it sounds really great in home recordings and it looks gorgeous. All right. Um, now, I have some fun stuff I want to show you guys and then we'll go, okay? I got some sort of unique boutique stuff. My friend Mark Piro at Placid Audio makes handmade carbon microphones. And this is the carbon mic. Look at that. Designed to sort of sit on a mic stand. All right, that is my Placid Audio handmade carbon mic. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm talking to Mark right now about making one that's more of a handheld. It has ergonomics to it that's thinner with this sort of metallic copper uh, industrial design. All right. For some reason, it's I'm not hearing it. I think I uh, I have a little. I think it requires power. That's why we can't hear it. But I want you guys to see it. Um, this is fun. Check this out. This is. Unfortunately, I can't read the name of the company on the box, um, but this is similar to Mark's carbon mic, similar to Placid Audio. Um, they would consider this to be a competitor. Um, and this is a, a salt shaker. Okay, it's a salt shaker. It's a, it's a salt shaker turned into a microphone. And yeah, oh, yeah, over here, over here, 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 So you get sort of like that old 1920s uh, <laughs> radio sound to it, I guess. So it's it's a novelty. It's something you would plug in if you wanted to get that sort of old school vintage um, 1920s uh, microphone sound. So if you wire up a salt shaker, that's what you can get. <laughs> now that was worth the wait, you gotta admit, that was pretty cool. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Um, we're almost out of time. We are out of time. And I'm gonna show you guys one more microphone, okay? And those of you that are Still on board. Appreciate you waiting. This is going to be cool. Here we are. This. I'm going to show this to you, the last one here. This is a company out of Portland called Ear Trumpet Labs. Go to eartrumpetlabs.com and you will see, I think, the most beautiful hand need condenser microphones in the world. Now, I don't know if they're the best or what have you, uh, but they sure are gorgeous. Look at this. I mean, this is, if you want to make microphones a work of art, if, if, if the objective is to make art, okay, as well as a microphone, that's what these guys are doing. It's quite obvious. Take a look at this guy.
I give to thee from Ear Trumpet Labs the Chantel. This is the Chantel. Look at that. Handmade. Condenser. Microphone. Sort of similar to what Mark Piro is doing at Placid Audio. Sort of like this metallic, um, sort of a, really of a, it's like a steampunk design microphone. This is, this is the Chantel. They make many different kinds. Uh, something that's kind of fun about this Chantel is, see this? So it turns. So you can, you can sit it on a mic stand or you can straighten it out. Um, there is a recording of um, one of my students singing an original song with the Chantel. If you go to uh, student performances, you'll see it. Okay, so that's the Chantel. They're from Portland, and they're just absolutely gorgeous. Love it. I can't show it to you because it's a condenser microphone. That's the problem. Um, I need a cable. That's why the system doesn't give it the power that it needs. That's why I can't show it to you. But it sounds great. All right. Show's over. Hope that was interesting for you guys. Those of you that I, that I didn't get to your questions today, I'll get. I'll put you at the top of the list. We'll cover it on next Thursday. Um, those of you that are interested in training and becoming a better singer, I can pretty much guarantee you that if you train with my program, the book, The Four Pillars of Singing, and, and on the course, and you do the routines inside, you do the integrated training routines inside, and you practice and you get after it, you will get results. I guarantee you. You have to do your part, you have to train, study it, figure out how it all works, 